Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Dr. Doshavo. We are going to be doing chapter two today. And I'm actually going to pull in several, several videos from YouTube for this. Genetics is hard, it's complicated. I've tried to cobble together some of the concepts. There are some videos that are already all pre put together for you. So I'm going to get you through the beginning and then I'm going to give you some YouTube videos to review. The best thing that I can tell you as you go through these notes is as soon as you get to something you don't understand, look it up. So I'm going to give you some visuals first. I personally am a very visual person. So I want to give you some of these concepts first. So we are starting with genetics. <clears throat> your genetics are coded in your DNA. Your DNA is in the nucleus of the cell. It always stays in there. Okay. Now, what it can do is give signals to what's called mRNA. And you can see DNA is a double strand. RNA is single strand. We're going to talk about this. I'm just giving you some visuals. mRNA is basically a messenger that comes out into the cytoplasm onto these little bulbs called ribosomes to make proteins. Proteins are the structural units of the body. It's important that we have that happen in all cells because it helps to rebuild the structures of the body. Okay, so remember, DNA is in the nucleus, doesn't leave. RNA can come in, mRNA can come in, can get a message from DNA about how to code a protein, and then it could come out and make that protein in the cytoplasm on what's called a ribosome. Okay. Now, another thing to help you get started. Amino acids are structures that link together to form a protein. So we get several of them linked together, okay, and there's millions of different configurations. You don't need to know them at this point. Just know that several amino acids are the structural basis for proteins, okay? So that's the beginning. So cell, cytoplasm, DNA, message, RNA, proteins, make, proteins leave, <laughs> okay? So there you go. Now, What happens with structure of DNA? So, and I've just pulled all of these from offline just to give you some ideas. And I pick and choose according to what helps me sort of teach according to these notes. We all know DNA is a double alpha helix. Alpha denotes the protein structure of DNA. Okay, so don't let it blow your mind. That's what it means. And if we were to unwind that helix and make it more like a step or a pair of ladder, or not pair, ladders, <clears throat> this structural backbone is made up of sugar and phosphate. Okay? And your book tells you later how phosphate is part of DNA. That's all it is. It creates the uprights that are the place where you put your hands on a ladder. And then you have bases. <clears throat> Some people call them nucleotides, some people call them um, nitrogenous bases, okay, because it contains nitrogen. But we have adenine and thymine, which pair, cytosine and guanine, which pair in DNA. RNA is a little bit different. We'll look at that in just a second. So you have in all of your cells this incredibly long continuation of DNA. And it's kind of like bundled up spaghetti when your cell is just resting. When your cell is going to be replicated, if this whole bundled spaghetti forms chromosomes, okay? And then those chromosomes can organize that genetic material. And then the genetic material can be either replicated in mitosis to create a future cell or a replicated cell. Or that genetic material can be split in half, so then we can use that for sperm, for example, during conception and get the right amount of chromosomes. Okay, this is all in the notes. I'm just giving you an overview. Okay, so here's that structure of DNA. Okay. DNA can do one of two things. So if you imagine that huge long line, and here's a chromosome, 
here is an unwinding, 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 unwinding. This is all DNA. So you can imagine how much DNA is in a chromosome. And then we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. It's an incredible amount, this huge sequence. So when a cell wants to replicate, so suppose I have two skin cells. No, 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 sorry, one skin cell. And this skin cell can sense that I'm running out of skin cells and it wants to replicate. The DNA inside of the nucleus will start to move into replicating itself. So it will unwind and it will split right in half. This huge long line of DNA splits in half. And one half goes here and one half goes here. And then we bring in matching nitrogenous bases that match. And if you can imagine, if you think about it for just a second, this creates two identical strands, right? Because you've got the coating here for one side. It'll create what would it be essentially an identical code to this. And then this will be an identical code to this because it's replicating itself. I may have just lost you there, but basically you're splitting it in half and replicating it. Okay. The other thing that people get confused about that DNA can do is it can create the genetic code for proteins. So suppose this is the genetic code between here and here that codes for, um, I don't know, collagen cells, okay? What will happen is just this part of the DNA strand will split. RNA comes in and copies the code for collagen fibers. That mRNA leaves the nucleus and this will go back together. And of course, as you can imagine, it happens millions of times, okay? So we can replicate a DNA strand if we need to create an identical cell. We could separate just parts of it if we need to create a protein. Okay, and we'll talk more about these steps in the future. Okay, here's a difference between DNA and RNA. So DNA is a double alpha helix, RNA is one strand. They all have these three bases. They both have cytosine, <clears throat> adenine, and guanine. DNA has thymine, RNA has uracil. Why? I don't know. A biochemist could tell you, I cannot. So keep in mind that the structure of them is different. The fact that DNA has a double alpha helix, it has two strands, RNA has one strand, and it has uracil in place of thymine. Okay, so that's the main difference. DNA stays in the nucleus. There's different forms of RNA that can go in and out of the nucleus and also function in the cytoplasm. And once again, this is all in the notes. I'm just giving you a basic once over. know that there was one other picture I wanted to show you. Here we go. Okay, here is the DNA. This, this blows my mind, this structure. In that long, 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 long strand. And it's a double alpha helix all the way down. And once it starts to coil up to form a chromosome, it wraps around proteins that are called histones. And those histones help to organize it into these nice little bundles that you see here. And then the bundles are stacked on each other and then they start to twist and wind. <clears throat> Pardon me. And then eventually they will form a chromosome right before um, the cell is ready to replicate. Okay. So just to give you a visual of that process.
Okay, let's get into, <clears throat> I'm going to keep those up in case I need them. Okay, let's look at the notes now. So genes and disease, uh, diseases. So DNA is that, is that structure that I showed you, and it has the phosphate molecule, which with the sugar creates those uprights that are the handles on which you would hold as you go up the ladder. And then the nitrogenous bases, the pyrimidines are cytosine and thymine, purines are adenine and guanine, the way I always remember stuff is I would remember that adenine and guanine are pure. So that it just quick little ways I would try to memorize things like that. And then pyramids are made up of C's and T's. I don't know, something silly like that to help you remember those subunits. And they're named as such because they have different biochemical structures. Here's the structure that we already went through that forms that double alpha helix. It directs the synthesis of proteins made of one or more polypeptides. Proteins are made of amino acids which form polypeptides is what they mean by that. There are 20 amino acids. Um, you know, we're not going to get much into which amino acid codes for which protein. That gets super complicated. But the order of those bases the cytosine, thymine, adenine, guanine, it'll be your cell and RNA. The order of them are what directs the order of the amino acids. They have to all be in a specific order. And once again, I'm not going to get into those specifics. There may be a slide in the future we'll look at a little bit. So DNA, when it replicates, it unzips, it untwists, it copies itself, and then it has two forms identical to each other of the DNA in that cell. You can see in this picture it unzips, copies itself to identical strands. <clears throat> so you could get mutations and these I think I don't need to really read through. You can read through them on your own. Um, it blows my mind when you really think of how delicate those little structures are how easily it could be damaged and all of these issues can happen and cause a mutation. Same thing here. And there are areas that are more prone to having mutations. A mutagen is going to be something that can increase the rate of those mutations. You can see it's exactly things you would think of. Um, formaldehyde was a big one. I worked with that for years. I never had asthma until I worked with formaldehyde. Um, and I kind of regret that now, but what are you going to do? Um, radiation, of course, is another big one. The people who um, discovered uh, radiation and use it for x-rays died from radiation poisoning, unfortunately. So we have what's called transcription and translation. So let's go to a picture. I feel like pictures help me. So <clears throat> what happens when we are making a protein? That little part of DNA that codes for that protein unzips. mRNA comes in, gets the code. It then travels out to what's called a ribosome. That's on what's called the endoplasmic reticulum. I don't know if you remember that or not. But it's where we actually make the proteins that will then go out and be the structural units of our body. At that point, another form of RNA comes in called T. RNA. And you can see it floating out here. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> the TNA will bring the little amino acids in. So the mRNA is giving the code. The tRNA is actually getting all these teeny tiny little amino acids and putting them in the right order, doing all the link work in order to code for the appropriate protein. So if we go back to the notes, and then it'll be exported out into the cytoplasm. It'll be encased and then sent out of the cell, unless it needs to be used in the cell. So the part inside where we're having DNA talk to mRNA is called, called transcription. 
I always equated that with being a transcriptionist. I don't know. Some of you may or may not know that where someone sits and does transcription with a old fashioned typewriter. I imagine them sitting inside the nucleus and transcribing the code for that protein. And then translation is where we actually have to translate from those bases, translating it into the actual protein out in the cytoplasm. So transcription, you can read through those steps. Um, polymerase is simply an enzyme that helps to bind. Form mRNA, that RNA polymerase detaches. mRNA moves out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm. That continues until it gets to the ribosome and it forms the protein. So gene splicing, you can see some of the sequences are removed. Those are called introns, and those remaining are spliced together, called exons, before it migrates to the cytoplasm. So RNA synthesis of a polypeptide, which is a protein, is one form of a protein. And then you form it with the interaction with tRNA at those ribosomes that I spoke about. tRNA contains a sequence of nucleotides complementary to the triad of nucleotides on the mRNA strand, which is known as the codon. So the mRNA strand has the code, tRNA has the anticode to form the actual protein. I would kind of memorize which goes with which. I can see that coming out in the future. Translation. Ribosomes move along mRNA to sequence those amino acids, creating the protein. That protein's released. We've gone through those steps with the picture. Okay. And once again, you could see on there all of those phrases. And I know it showed codon. Let's see, anticodon. I know I saw it previously. Anti there it is. Okay, so you could see here, a little bit confusing. I wanted to point this out to you. It took me a minute to find on, find it. This is the anti-codon, which is that tRNA, okay? And then the codon, which comes from mRNA. It has mRNA bonding site as anti-codon, but remember in here, the tRNA is the anti-codon. So it's the binding site for the mRNA, just a side Okay, so which is true? RNA is double-stranded, DNA is replicated in the cytoplasm. Yet again, read every word. RNA contains the same bases as DNA. A mutation is an inherited alteration of DNA. Which one is true? See the answer over on this side. All right, so read through that. Read through the differences and the similarities. All right. So we have in somatic cells, in our body cells, we're not talking about sperm and eggs. We are talking about cells that we have in our body that replicate themselves, have 23 pairs, a total of 46 chromosomes. They are known as diploid cells. They are formed through mitosis, where the cell DNA replicates and splits. Gametes, which will be sperm, and then eggs that have been ovulated and are ready for um, conception, contain 23 total chromosomes. People always get that confused, so make sure you sort of get that into your head. 46 in regular somatic body cells, 23 in re quote-unquote reproductive cells. That is a haploid number of chromosomes. So I always remember that. It sounds like half. That is actually formed through a process called meiosis. We'll talk about that in the future with reproduction. Autosomes are the first um, 22 of the 23 pairs that do not include the sex chromosomes. Because the sex chromosomes are very unique. XX and XY in um, biological females, it's XX. Biological males, it's XY. And they're displayed in what's called a karyotype. And I honestly have taught this for years and kind of forgot how they made karyotypes. 
Um, it, there's got to be an automated way now, I would think. But they used to take a picture of the chromosomes from one cell, cut them out, and arrange them in size. And you would get them. And they know them probably from different sizes, but different genes will be on these different chromosomes, as you are most likely aware. But could you imagine having to sit down and cut them out and put them in order? Got to be some sort of automate, automated way to do that. Okay, so I just found that kind of interesting. So the karyotype will give you an overall look of the order and the structure of your chromosomes. Okay. I believe in your book, while well, we have this picture up, the chromatids are these arms, the centromere, where they all come together, is um, this center portion here. I believe your book uses that reference in the future. Okay. Chromosome aberrations, there are several of them, and I believe you have to know these for your boards, of course. So you plate cells have a multiple of the normal number of chromosomes. So these are like the normally seen number, haploid and diploid. So if you have a number that is more, it would be called by how many additional copies there are. Tri and tetra would mean you know, three times or four times the copy. This is not conducive with life. There can be slight alterations, as we know, with the chromosomes. There cannot be this many numbers. So aneuploidy is a cell that doesn't have that normal 23 pairs of chromosomes. Okay. So a cell containing three copies of one chromosome, Trisomy, that probably sounds familiar. Monosomy is a presence of only one. We're going to go through some genetic um, changes that cause that. Monosomy is lethal, but infants can survive with trisomy of certain chromosomes. Um, I found that a little confusing because there are some chromosome aberrations where they're missing one of them. Um, we'll look at that in the future. So what I would suggest to you is to look at each individually, and I'll show you in just a second. Non-disjunction is a failure of those chromosomes to separate during meiosis or mitosis, and this is a great visual. You could see non-disjunction where these should split, and the open areas are where they should be sending one. They stay together, and they will end up causing trisomy. In this case, same thing here. The non-disjunction in this case happens in meiosis, sorry, I had to look really quickly in the second step of meiosis, and you get trisomy as here as well, and then monosomy here, which is one. Try three, mono, you guys get that. Okay. So partial trisomy, only an extra part of the chromosome is present in each cell. And then chromosomal mosaics, trisomy is occurring only in some cells of the body. Down syndrome, best example we know is trisomy 21. Um, and I think this is all pretty straightforward. You're probably mostly familiar with those um, descriptions. If not, please read through them. <clears throat> so women can have three X's. Okay, you could read through that as well. It would be another trisomy. Turner syndrome, here is the example that I was telling you, is a female with only one X chromosome. Quite often, every path course I've ever taught has this. I don't know if this is um, common. Uh, let's see if it uh, doesn't have the numbers. But, I, or if they like it on your boards, but and put that in your head. But here's an example of a female with only one X chromosome you can see the characteristics listed below and here is a picture okay klein filter they always have this in path books as well 
Yeah, I'm not trying to lead you. Once again, I don't make up the exams for this class, but I'm just saying these are repeats. Individuals with at least two X's and one Y, you could read through the descriptions. They tend to be um, more feminine in their presentation. Okay. Um, I don't, I've seen maybe better examples of this where the males tend to have more breast presentation and more female-like present body presentation, but there's varying degrees of it. Abnormalities, if it breaks, we can repair it um, in a way that may also alter that structure. So clastogens, agents that increase the ability of that happening. Okay. Cry of the cat. It deletes the short arm of chromosome 5. Once again, you can read through those descriptions there. Shows you where that breakage happens and that deletion happens. And also have duplication. Okay. Um, I'm kind of going through this because it's all pretty straightforward. But of course, you have questions, let me know. Inversions, where you flip-flop according to one area of the chromosome. Okay. And we show you a picture in just a second. Translocations. Okay, Ooh, we have a picture of the translocation. Okay, that's located there. Um, and then with the inversion, two breaks on a chromosome, reversal of the genetic order usually occurs and gets reversed. So that's going to reverse itself, I'm sorry. And then translocation has it in a different location. Um, fragile X. Is an area that's prone to being damaged, and you could see the presentations there. So, I see as we're going through, gosh, I take, I really, these lectures in genetics, ugh, it's just like a laundry list. So, what I would do if I were you is I would make notes and look for things that stand out. A lot of them have intellectual disability, okay? So, what is going to stand out here? This is this has fragile sites. That's what would stand out to me. Areas on the chromosomes that are distinctive and more prone to breaks. This is going to be on the long arm of the X chromosome. This is going to be different from Down syndrome. So as we're going along and kind of doing this litany, this laundry list of things to do, that's what I would look for. I would look for things that stick out. Okay. Now. Moving from here through the next couple of slides, I'm actually going to give you a video from online and then I'll come back on and finish the rest of the notes. As always, if you have any questions, let me know. Have a great day.